What's going on, YouTube? This is SG1 Sports, and you're watching our college football channel. We continue with our schedule preview, projected record series, TCU up next. Like, let's look back at the 2023 schedule. Of course, a very disappointing season, 5-7. and seven. Uh, Lost a lot of close games, and TCU is a perfect example of one of those Big 12 teams that is going to have a lot of 50-50 games, and we saw that last year, and you're going to see it again this next year when we get to that schedule and we start looking at those projections. But uh, they played Colorado in the non-conference and they played SMU in the, in the non-conference lost to Colorado that was a bit of a surprise uh, the SMU game though they bounced back and they won that game it's a good SMU team so it wasn't all bad but uh, just just lost a lot of road games Iowa State Kansas State Texas Tech Oklahoma Texas a really good team they lost to them West Virginia uh, and again came up just short of missing a, uh, of making it to a bowl game last season but this is the 2024 schedule we'll break it down first the non-conference at Stanford, LIU, and at SMU. So they're going to play two non-conference games on the road against, well, let's call it Power 4 opponents. Remember, SMU now in the ACC, Stanford in the ACC as well. Uh, imagine if you had looked at this schedule before last season and you had said that, that Stanford and SMU were going to be in the ACC in 2024. I mean, that's just crazy. But uh, anyways, they'll play those two teams on the road, and you don't normally see teams play more than one non-conference game especially on the road but even just against power five opponents or power four opponents i've got to use saying that uh in, in a lot of cases you don't see them play maybe two but not usually two on the road uh, you look at the home schedule in the big 12 they've got ucf houston texas tech oklahoma state and arizona three very winnable games ucf houston and texas tech they'll have a really good shot at home oklahoma state and arizona could be a little bit tougher you look at the road schedule again stanford and smu in the conference they've got kansas utah baylor and cincinnati so obviously kansas and utah could be very tough baylor and cincinnati perhaps they'll have a chance to go on the road and win those games so we'll look at the full schedule here they'll open up on friday night of that opening weekend on the road at stanford on august 30th then they play liu on september 7th UCF on the 14th, back-to-back -back home games there, but then it's back-to-back -back road games at SMU on September 21st and at Kansas on September 28th. Uh, so those will be tough there, back-to-back. -to -back. And then they get Houston after that on the 4th and home. Then they'll get a bye week before playing on the road at Utah and then back home for Texas Tech on, September, on October the 26th. Then they'll go to Baylor on November 2nd, Oklahoma State at home on the 9th, get their second bye week late in the season before playing Arizona at home, and then Cincinnati on the road to close out the season. So, you know, it's, it's not a terrible schedule, but again, playing Stanford and SMU on the road in the non-conference, that's pretty tough, especially SMU and Kansas back-to-back -back road games there. That's their only back-to-backs, though, that they have on the road, and it's really the only tough, you know, they don't really have a lot of tough stretches. You look at Oklahoma State and Arizona, they're both at home. They get a bye week before in between those games. Uh, Utah is a tough one, but you've got Houston and Texas Tech before and after at home. So this schedule sets up pretty well for TCU, really. Uh, again, uh, non-conference is, is tougher than a lot of teams in the Big 12, but overall, and especially in the Big 12, it sets up pretty well uh, with the way their schedule is. And, you know, they do have to play a lot of the tough teams. They don't play Kansas State. You know, that's good news. That's a positive um, they don't play West Virginia, who beat them last year. So there are definitely some positives with the schedules. Of course, with the schedule, of course, some negatives as well, though, again, with, with playing uh, SMU and Stanford on the road in the non-conference. But let's get to the projections now, the projections from last season. Of course, they were 5-7. and seven. Our projection had them at 10-2, and two, and that's a perfect example of our projections really uh, probably leaning too much into the previous season because we do them so early. Uh, they're not predictions, they're just projections, and you don't project teams to really change a whole lot. Now, I actually thought TCU was going to have a good season last year. I thought they'd go 9-3. and three. Uh, They were awful in one-score games, 0-4. Oh, if they had won their four uh, one-score games, they would have actually been 9-3. and three. So I don't think they were as bad as it seemed, but they weren't really all that close to 9-3. and three. Uh, that they should have at least made it to a bowl game though at six and six. Athlon was closer at eight and four. So again, my prediction, my proje our projections last year, they were bad. They, I mean, they were just bad for TCU, and I'll admit it. Uh, sometimes you just miss, and we missed on the Horn Frogs last season. I really thought that this team would uh, be able to keep it going and be solid this past season. I uh, didn't expect them to be in the playoff, but I thought they'd be better. And the over under last year was seven and a half. So. Uh, those expectations, I was way over the expectations. I, I went with my gut and, again, just missed it here with TCU. So you get to this schedule, and we'll get to the projections here. If it's under 20 or over 80, those are games that are pretty much guaranteed wins or losses. 
20 to 29, 71 to 80 percent games where I think you're going to see a, a pretty big favorite, a double digit favorite, 30 to 39, 61 to 70 games where it's going to be. I think the spread's going to be closer to a touchdown, six, seven, eight points, and then the 50 50 games. The games could go either way. They had a lot of those last year, and they're going to have a lot of them this year. I mean, you could almost just say the whole schedule is made up of 50 50 games. Uh, again, this is the formula that we use. This is not a prediction, but you've got one game that should be a win. LIU, that's their one easy win. And then you look at the rest of the schedule. There are teams that are a little bit below them that they play on the road, and there are teams a little bit above them that they play at home, and that makes those games 50-50 games. So that's really the majority of the schedule, but you've got a couple of games where I think they will be uh, about a touchdown underdog at Kansas and at Utah. And if TCU doesn't improve, it, these games might even should be on the, in the orange. Uh, that wouldn't change the projection, though, but it, it, you could make that argument if Utah and Kansas turn out to be really good. Uh, you know, I think they'll be, they won't be as good as Oklahoma State or Arizona, but they get those games at home, and that makes those 50 50 games. So you've got a lot of games that could go either way. That's really the story with most of the teams in the Big 12. That's why our projections, you know, even the, the top teams are like 8 and 4, 7 and 5, because the, the t it, if you just go by the odds, the teams are going to beat up on each other because there's not a lot of separation. There's a ton of parity in this conference, especially with Oklahoma and Texas gone. Uh, so you're, you're just going to get a lot of close games. And for TCU, uh, it's it's right in the middle, 6-6. Six and six. That's their projection. Uh, I think that's pretty fair. I think they've got a real shot to get there. I think they could do a little better, but could be another 5-7. and seven. If they go 0-4 in one possession games again, they're probably not going to make a bowl game. It'll probably be a, a similar story to last year. But, again, our projection is 6-6. Six and six. Do you guys agree? Do you disagree? Give me your thoughts on TCU down in the comments below.